Hello and welcome to another video from the PowerP series from movingelectrons.com. Today we'll be talking about illumination engineering. This is a little bit different from the topics we've been discussing so far. We've mostly been dealing with uh, the TND section uh, of the PowerP exam slavis. And this is more a topic from the general power engineering section. Now, but it's a very interesting topic. Uh, this is not dealt with in uh, a general university education. At least I haven't seen uh, this topic being discussed uh, in uh, in a university setting. This is something uh, I learned about and mostly um, uh, I've heard uh, engineers learn about uh, when they join the workforce and they come across uh, lighting problems. Uh, but it's a very interesting topic as I mentioned and I'm hoping by the end of it I'll have some time after solving the uh, problem itself to go into some more details of the method we'll be using called the Lumen method as well as uh, talk a little bit more about the terminology that's used in, in illumination engineering like luminous flux, uh, luminous intensity and illumination itself. Uh, so hopefully you'll be able to gain an appreciation of a well-lit space uh, next time you uh, you walk into an office space or a commercial space and, and you'll see these, uh, the amount of science that's involved behind this. Um, so let's get into uh, the problem first. Uh, that's what's uh, important in terms of uh, uh, getting your marks in the exam because uh, you only need to be able to uh, know how to solve the problem. So let's uh, let's read the question here. A room has the following dimensions. Uh, it's been given a width of 40 feet and a length of 50 feet. There's a height of 10 feet. There's a light fixtures in the room that are hanging uh, two feet from the ceiling and have a coefficient of utilization of 0.82. The required illumination at the working level of 30 inches from the ground is 50 foot candles. The maintenance factor of the fixtures has been given as 0.92 and we've been asked to calculate the net luminous flux. So these are again as I mentioned if you haven't been exposed to this topic before uh, the units themselves for example foot candles, the terminology, maintenance factor, coefficient of, might be new but I'll uh, hopefully uh, have time to get into that because the problem itself is very straightforward once you know the formula. So the formula, we'll be using what's called a Lumen method. This is generally uh, one of the most uh, simpler methods to use uh, when uh, you want to get an idea of uh, lighting up uh, a general uh, space, for example, in this case, a, a room. So what that tells us is that the illumination is effective lumens over an area and the effective lumens are lamp lumens which is basically the net luminous flux. So that's the total amount of lumens. So the, the unit for net luminous flux for luminous flux as such is, is lumens. And uh, so the lamp lumens here in this formula is, is what we'll basically want to calculate. So the lamp lumens times the coefficient of utilization times the maintenance factor. That's the effective lumens. If we plug that into the illumination here, illumination becomes lamp lumens coefficient factor, uh, coefficient of utilization times the maintenance factor over the area. The unit for illumination is foot candles. So in our problem, we've been given the foot candles. So we've been given uh, the illumination, we've been given coefficient of utilization, we've been given the maintenance factor and we've been given the area and we have to find out the lamp lumens. So let's go ahead and look at the solution for the problem. Uh, again, if you refer back to this, uh, uh, this equation here, what we have to find out, as I mentioned, is the lamp lumens, which will become your foot candles, which is your illumination times your area. So the area for the room is going to be the length times the width over the coefficient of utilization times the maintenance factor. I'm doing nothing here but just rearranging the terms in this formula from the Lumen method. So if you just plug in the values here, uh, what's the, uh, so it's 50 foot candles. So let me go ahead and uh, plug that here. That is 50 uh, length times the width. So we have 50 times 40. Coefficient of utilization has been given as 0.82 and maintenance factor has been given as 0.92. If we plug that in and we calculate, we should get a value of 132,556 lumens. 
and that's our answer and from the options given that is option C. So as you see it's a relatively straightforward uh, problem in terms of the math that's involved. So uh, as I promised uh, and since we have the time before I give you the sample problem let's look at a little bit more uh, of the theory. So what's what's the lumen lumen method here? What are the terminologies here? There's lamp lumens, there's coefficient of utilization, there's maintenance factor uh, and there's the area. So the area is straightforward. Let's start by looking at the maintenance factor. So the maintenance factor has some more terminologies involved. There is the lamp lumen depreciation and there is the luminaire dirt depreciation. This is LLD and this is LDT. These are the terminologies. So you'll, you'll see if you pick up an illumination manual um, or, or, or a technical guide uh, related to this either from uh, one of the manufacturers or from uh, a standards association. These are some of the factors you'll come across. So the lamp lumen depreciation basically this talks about the depreciation of light uh, of the light source with time so you have depreciation uh, with time so this is a factor that accounts for that um, there are factors like ballast factor you'll hear voltage uh, factor uh, we obviously don't have the time to go into all of this in details what i want you to do uh, what i basically want to do here is just uh, wet your appetite a little bit uh, and if you're interested you can you can look at uh, more details uh, a lot of the vendors have a lot of good inf information and maybe i'll do a more detailed video on this topic sometime in the future but again uh, as i mentioned for the power pe series you basically need to understand how to solve the problem so this is how you solve it but uh, it's always good to know a little bit uh, of the background. So the luminaire dirt depreciation. So what what is a what is a luminaire? So a, if you notice, uh, uh, if uh, let's say for example in your office, what you might see is there are fluorescent um, fluorescent lamps, and each each of the fixtures that you notice in your ceiling might have, for example, two lamps. So these are two lamps, and this big thing. Here is the is the luminaire is the is the luminaire. Uh, so it's basically the light fixture, and within that you might have x number of, of lamps depending. So the luminaire dirt depreciation is over time uh, dirt will accumulate um, on on the fixture, and and this accounts for that uh, dirt on the uh, luminaire. One of the other things I uh, I forgot to mention here. Uh, so most problems uh, that I've noticed would generally just ask you for the net luminous flux. flux. Uh, but in in the real world or even in a problem uh, that you might uh, come across in the exam, uh, what they might ask for is, uh, or what you can easily calculate from here is the number of fixtures required. So let's, for example, say that we have 100 watt fixtures and um, each of those fixtures gives out 10,000 uh, lumens, right? So from here, now that you have your total net lumens that you need, you can find out your number of fixtures as just being the net lumens, net lumen over the um, lumens per fixture. So for example, in this case, you just say, for example, 132,556 over 10,000 lumens should give you approximately um, 14 fixtures, for example. And then from here, you can calculate the number of lamps that you need based on how many lamps are there in each fixture. So that's that's something that you might need uh, in more of a practical setting. So anyway, so we've uh, coming back to this. So we've covered the maintenance factor here. Uh, maintenance factor, as I mentioned, generally accounts for the lamp lumen depreciation as well as the luminate dirt depreciation. In this problem, we were given the maintenance factor. Uh, if you're not given the maintenance factor in a problem, you can assume it to be one. And what happens in that case is you get a value, uh, what's called the initial, uh, initial foot candle level as opposed to the maintained foot candle 
level. So when you're given the maintenance factor, you can you get the maintained foot candle level. So if you're given that in the problem, use that. If not, then you can just take this value to be equal to one and calculate your result from there. Uh, the next factor that we can look at is the coefficient of utilization. So the coefficient of utilization is nothing but the ratio between the luminaire lumens on the work plane over the uh, luminaire well that's I should write that as LM then so luminaire lumens at the source so what we're basically saying is when uh, so if this is your light source and this is your work plane uh, there'll be some light loss here uh, that happens due to uh, luminaire efficiency then you have your reflectance of the volume in which the so this when you say reflectance of the volume then this is the volume of the room so there's generally let's say if there's a window here then you have some light source coming from the outside and then the volume of your space so these are some of the factors that are accounted for in the coefficient of utilization um, and once we have so we account for all of that when calculating our effective lumens as well or the illumination as such so that's the lumen method now let's look at some of the terminology that's involved um, that you might hear about when you're uh, referring to illumination engineering one of the first things we look at is uh, luminous flux so luminous flux is basically the quantity of energy of light emitted in essence it's a measure of the power of the light so it's a measure of the power of the light source and the unit for this is what we've seen here lumens this is what we were asked to find out so that is luminous flux it's a measure of the power of the light right and then you have something called luminous intensity intensity and this is a measure of the uh, direction of the light so it's the directionality of the light and it is the can be defined as the ability of the light in a given direction and it's measured using what's called a solid angle so it is the luminous flux by a light source in a given solid angle so what's a solid angle if you imagine a sphere so let's see hopefully I can draw it properly if you imagine a sphere and you take an angle and surface area here and let's say you have a light source at the center of the sphere so the light that's passing through this surface area so let's say the the uh, the radius of the sphere is r and this surface area is a then luminous intensity is the luminous flux so let's say luminous flux is fl so fl divided by a over r square so that is your luminous intensity and that's your solid what's referred to as solid angle the unit for luminous intensity is candela or c d so that's luminous intensity then we have illumination so okay before i go to illumination let's look at what is luminance because there's luminance and there's illuminance and there is a difference so luminance 
is basically the luminance intensity emitted through a unit area by a light source so again if you have a light source here and if you take a unit area let's say one centimeter square so the amount of luminous intensity passing through here that is luminance so the unit for this would be candela per centimeter square or candela per meter square depending on the uh, surface area through which you're measuring it and now the main thing that we measure and which we are worried about is illumination or illuminance and that is your foot candles and uh, the you would also hear uh, lux being used which is the metric unit for this is lux and this is what when you're uh, as a designer uh, when you're defining when you're designing the light for a particular area this is what you design it at uh, so what would be given to you is that on an operating plane i need let's say 50 lux of light or 500 lux of light and that's how you will design your um, area lighting so illumination that, and that's that's what we saw the formula for this up here uh, that is el that is the effective lumens over a uh, particular surface area so l that is in essence luminous flux over a surface area and then you account for uh, your coefficient of utilization as well as your uh, maintenance factor to get the effective lumens so once again i know i i, uh, I went kind of in a hurry through all of this uh, just uh, to account for the amount of time that we have uh, Again, this is a very detailed topic. There are a lot of uh, there's a lot of work that's being done on this, uh, but I just wanted to give you an idea of what these terms mean and uh, what the Lumen method is about. So let me leave you with a sample problem here, uh, very similar to the one that we uh, solved. So let's say you have your uh, room dimensions have been given to you as thirty feet by thirty feet the height of the room is nine feet let's say um, the um, required illumination is 60 foot candles your coefficient of utilization is 0 0.80 and let's say you've not been given a maintenance factor so um, just uh, find out the uh, net lumens and uh, leave your uh, answers in the comment section below as always if you have any feedback for me uh, feel free to send me an email nimish at movingelectrons.com or feel free to, uh, free to leave your comments in the comment section below um, and um, as always i'll see you in the next time till then take care and bye now